Hello, everyone. And uh, you can enjoy your lunch. And uh, I wanted to give a talk about uh, the, the uh, invasive mode infection, especially uh, in, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, this is my disclosure and uh, this disclaimer. Okay, and uh, I want to present is my case. You can see this very latest one. Uh, it just happened uh, uh, last month. Yes, it's a 56, 57 years old man, and uh, he had only the uh, half tension, hyperlipidemia, and he had symptoms about cough, shortness of breath, and during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we all know this uh, typical symptoms of COVID infection, and the patient did the COVID rapid test by himself, and the result was positive. But the symptom progressed, and uh, he went to our emergency department, and. Uh, you can see the COVID PCR was positive and the dissection was fine. And the initial chest x-ray, you can see bilateral lung infiltrate, typical COVID pneumonia, and he was admitted to ICU due to the possibility of ARDS. And we gave the standard of care of COVID infection like Zendensivir, dexamethasone, tocilizumab, and empirical antibodies. We did uh, all patients in ICU with intubations, uh, uh, aspergillus screen. Uh, we used the uh, endotracheal aspirate for the aspergillus glycomen and letal for the PCR were all negative. Uh, you can see the patient gradually improve after the stand of care treatment here. The patient extubated after uh, a one week treatment of COVID-19 infection. However, when we try to transfer the patient to the journal world, you can see a little bit of low-grade fever, tach tachycardia, like infectious sign occurred in this patient. And uh, you can see the, a series of chest x-ray. You can find a bilateral uh, infiltration, hmm? bilateral infiltration of the peripheral area of the lung. And we did the CAT scan. You can see typical uh, ground grass opacity and consolidation over bilateral low peripheral area. And uh, the patient, uh, now, if this is your patient, what is your treatment plan for this patient? You can escalate the antibacterial agent, maybe co-infection of bacteria. Or you can restart the Rendensivir, maybe COVID restart again, or you can restart the dexamethasone. This patient, I only gave him the five days course of dexamethasone. And uh, you can start antifungal agent right now, or what else would you do? So please, you can vote for this. Okay, and I, we can see uh, most of you to uh, choose the escalate antibacterial agent. Yes, it's true. And uh, some of you to uh, try to start antifungal agent, maybe due to the, you know, the topic is about <laughs> fungus or others. I just know what kind of others you want to do. And, uh, and <laughs> yeah, and uh, here is the final result. And for this patient, we did the culture and the culture group Burkholderia Spacia. Truly, we escalated the, and shift the antibodies to safe targeting and aminocycling for the coverage of the Burkholderia. And we did a repeat the aspergillus study. And we have the rapid test like aspergillus letal for Aze a positive result, and we start the antifungal agent with the isafconarol. 
before we got the result. Because I think, uh, in my experience, the uh, CT scan is very untypical. It's not a typical for the bacterial infection. It's peripheral located. And uh, <clears throat> we finally have all results were positive for the aspergillus, like positive galactomannan test, positive PCR, and even later, the culture grew aspergillus niger. And we did the bronchoscopy for the patient. You can see many uh, whitish plaque uh, over the trachea, and the biopsy showed the uh, uh, septate hyphae, suggestive of aspergillus. And you can see we, uh, the patient was re-intubated due to the uh, respiratory distress. Because of we start the antifungal agent very early, uh, early before the result, and uh, you can see the patient improved very rapidly, and uh, the patient extubated again after one week antifungal agent treatment. So we identify many uh, risk factors for invasive mole infection other than traditional uh, hemato traditional risk factor in early 2000. And we find advanced liver cirrhosis, COPD under serial treatment is uh, our risk factors for IA. And uh, during 2009 and 2012, the influenza epidemic, we find another uh, risk factor is the severe influenza, uh, severe viral pneumonia maybe is a risk factor for IPA. And uh, during the 2019 COVID-19 pandemic, we identify another risk factor is the severe COVID-19 infection. And uh, some experts raised their uh, angio invasion threshold model. They think maybe this uh, accumulating some risk factor may due to the patient, those pro uh, predisposing factors cause the patient to get CAPA or IPA. But you can see the, this model explains why a less angiovascular invasive type of uh, kappa and the more uh, angiovascular invasive type in uh, IPA. And uh, the later in manifestation of COVID, severe COVID-19 infection because of the, we need maybe some uh, accumulating factors like uh, immunotherapy or other corticosteroid, et cetera, to cause the patient to have the kappa. And uh, about the uh, aspergillus trachea bronchitis, sometimes we have the predisposing factor and the viral infection, maybe use some uh, drugs to control the COVID cytokine stone. However, maybe uh, make the patient have another risk to the fungal infection. And later on, the patient uh, cytokine stone resolved, the, the, but they got the invasive pulmonary aspergillosis. And the first study published to cause our awareness of the CAPA is the study published here. You can see they collect 186 CAPA patients and identified 43 colonization. And the, the multi-country uh, registry study, they found above 10% average incidence in uh, COVID-19 patient under uh, ventilated support, the incidence rate is about 10%. And another study, I think they do very intensively for the uh, severe COVID-19 infection patient. They did the bar on admission and did the bar again uh, one week after admission or after in, uh, ventilator support, and they did about upon the clinical worsening of chest X-ray or symptoms. So they did the they did the bronchoscopy very intensively. They used the criteria with CAPA criteria, IPA criteria and the aspergillus ICU, and uh, you can find the incidence rate is very high. They found a nearly 30% prevalence of a severe COVID-19 in patient, patients with CAPA. And 20% uh, of these CAPA patients, they have trachea bronchitis. The risk factor they identify is uh, chronic steroid use. And uh, other studies like uh, published in USA and the United Kingdom, they find a similar result is the corticosteroid use 
a large dose or long-term use corticosteroid use is a risk factor for CARPA. And uh, uh, you can find uh, the study published in Lancet Respiratory Medicine. They identified the state of care of severe COVID-19 infection, including dexamethasone and uh, tocilizumab, this kind of anti interleukin 6 therapy may predispose patients to have invasive pulmonary aspergillosis. So we try to uh, save patients uh, with severe COVID infection to avoid or reduce the cytokine stone. However, maybe we cause the patient to another a dangerous situation for a specious infection. And you can see here the uh, instance in this study is 15%. So I think 15% maybe is, is average incidence for severe COVID-19 infection to have CARPA. And uh, the study published in, for the United Kingdom, you can find if we uh, don't treat CARPA with adequate fungal treatment, the mortality could be nearly 100%. I think it's very high, but uh, you can see even higher than invasive yeast infection. And if we treat patient adequately, the mortality can decrease to uh, 40, uh, 45, 46%. So adequate treatment for CARPA patient is very important, really can reduce the mortality. And other studies show similar results. If we have patients with severe COVID-19 infection, the um, survival rate is uh, average 80%, but if they have CARPA, and the uh, uh, mortality decreased to 56 percentage or, uh, or more. <clears throat> their, their survival decreased about 25% uh, if they combined infections with aspergillus. This result has similar results. So if, if severe COVID-19 patients have the aspergillus infection, the mortality rate can increase about 30%. It's only due to the aspergillus itself, or maybe it's delayed treatment, or we didn't find the risk factor to give the patients, CARPA patient adequate fungal treatment to cause the so high uh, mortality, or yes. So maybe we can think about this issue. And uh, uh, the Paul Vave uh, recalled some uh, expert to do the expert opinion about IPA. And, uh, we proposed a case definition for IPAR and including aspergillus tronchial bronchitis and IPAR, and we divided to proven and probable. You can see the probable here to include serum glycomanin index, BAL glycomanin index, and BAL culture or typical uh, image finding uh, or trachea aspirate culture. And so, very importantly is to get the sample to get a test to prove the uh, aspergillus. And uh, the study showed that they tried to define the CARPA. They used three different definitions, aspergillus, ICU, IPA, or CARPA specific. The CARPA specific, you can see here, you, they used the, or the test you, you have, you, you, if you have the uh, culture or uh, uh, glycomanin, PCR or uh, beta D glucan, and the, all the sample you have from serum, MBL, BAL. So these reminders, uh, uh, we should do every test you have to identify the uh, aspergillus in severe COVID-19 patient, and every kind of sample you can obtain even uh, sputum or endotracheal aspirate or MBL. Uh, I think BL is better, but sometimes if you think it's dangerous to do bronchoscopy, I think even MBL is, is good. So you can see the uh, instance rate is about 15% uh, average according to IPA or CARPA specific definition, but for the aspergillus ICU, the incident rate is very low. I think it's under report because the entry criteria for aspergillus ICU is culture positive. So sometimes it's hard to have positive culture for CARPA patient. 
And uh, uh, probably uh, they recruit another uh, expert to, to publish the CARPA issue. And uh, they use the uh, worsening uh, unexplained clinical deterioration as anterior uh, criteria. And we should do something for those patients, even bronchoscopy of we can use the serum glycomene, and if one or more tests are positive, maybe we should start to treat patients with antifungal therapy. So most importantly is that we should obtain some uh, specimens like serum or uh, BL or sputum or something. We should do something if the patient, you cannot explain the clinical deterioration. We should think fungus, and if we have more tests are positive, we have the confidence to start the uh, antifungal therapy as soon as possible. And uh, <clears throat> another uh, study by, published by Yi Shang consensus criteria for CARPA, they define, you can see the CARPA probable. They, the BAL, uh, for the CARPA probable, they including BAL samples and uh, they add the PCR and they define the CQ level is below 36. It's very important because some uh, experts think the PCI is too sensitive, so the CQ uh, value is very important. Sometimes, uh, many years ago, we didn't have the CQ level when we do the uh, uh, produced PCR, but now we all have the CQ level to identify it's true positive or maybe it's correlation or it's false positive. And you can see here, they told us to have uh, culture or uh, glycomelin or letter for or they or PCR. So I still want to say if we uh, suspicious patients have the aspergillus infection, we should do all tests we have and uh, try to obtain all the specimen we can have, uh, even uh, sputum or endotracheal aspirate, I think is good. Or otherwise, serum, we can all uh, obtain the serum for all patients. And if we have more tests are positive, you can see the, this study, more tests positive, uh, the survival rate is lower, means they really could have a uh, CARPA. So if we do all tests we have, more positive results can enhance our confidence to, to diagnose the patient really have CARPA and we should start antifungal agent as soon as possible. And the uh, idea sky for the management of aspergillosis, we all know that the primary treatment is, is uh, voriconazole and the alternative treatment is isoconazole. Yes, we all know that, but I want to emphasize on the second one, is patients we strongly suspect uh, IPA, we should uh, uh, start the antifungal treatment as soon as possible, not waiting all results are positive, yes. It's saving life, I think. Just like my patient, we start uh, the antifungal agent one or two days before the test result and the patient recover very rapidly. And uh, about the treatment, the PCR and culture are very important because the, those tests can identify the other sensitive or other resistant pathogen uh, because it's different treatment strategy. If the uh, PCR show no resistant gene, we can use voriconazole or isafconazole. But if the PCR or culture show the other resistant, and uh, we should move to maybe the liposomal enviterin B or uh, combination therapy if we suspect the other resistant pathogen. And the duration is minimum six to 12 weeks. And uh, I treat my patients, it depends on the three criteria. The immunosuppression is improved. So I, I, I try to not use the steroid so long time. If the patient cytokine storm resolve rapidly, I will uh, stop the steroid treatment or even the anti-interleukin-6 treatment, uh, not maybe t 10 days, maybe five or six days, and to reduce the duration of immunosuppression. And the pa patient recover from severe COVID-19, maybe the immunoparalysis resolve rapidly, and uh, the Image study is very important. Sometimes we can see all the 
a capital region or a larger region, if the, those regions disappear, we can stop the treatment. Yes. <clears throat> and I think TDN is very important because the, you know, we treat ICU patients. Many ICU patients, they have the kidney failure or liver failure. Those cause the change of pharmacological dynamics. So when we did a prospective observational study and we find uh, about 35 percentage of patients, we treat them with standard voriconano dosage, but 35 uh, percent of them, they are underdose or overdose, not within the therapeutic range. So we use more isafconano in ICU for treatment invasive pulmonary aspergillosis due to this reason, because TDN is not available in every hospital. Sometimes, um, Monitoring of drug level is not possible for every, every uh, hospital. Sometimes if we use another drug, uh, doesn't need to monitor so closely, maybe it's safer or more effective. So we use more isoconado to treat uh, ICU patient with IPA. And for the first uh, phase, uh, we have take home message is the diagnosis of IPA in ICU population require high index of suspicion. We should always keep in mind fungus infection in high-risk group and the non-traditional risk factor group is very important. We should keep in mind. And especially non-traditional risk factor because for the hematologic patient or neutropenia, we always keep in mind they probably could have the, the uh, aspergillus of mold infection, but uh, Sometimes uh, without classical uh, risk factor, sometimes we, we don't remind us, we, maybe they have the opportunity to have this infection. And uh, we should start any fungal treatment uh, if we highly suspicious of IPA infection uh, before obtaining definite proof of infection. And uh, at the same time, the diagnostic workup for IPA is very uh, highly recommended in clinical deterioration patient with no other explanation of or CT scan show cavitary or nodule lesion. And we should integrate all mycology tests would be useful and all kind of sample if you can obtain. You can obtain from uh, sputum or trachea aspirate, MBL, and the BL is better. And we can do all the tests that you have, the glycoman and lateral force, the APCR culture. And the first line treatment uh, therapy is voriconazole and isafconazole and the savage arrow resistant, we should move to a liposomal amaterism B. And another issue is about the CAM. And uh, this patient is a 70 year old man. He had only BPH. And uh, you can see he had the typical symptom of COVID-19 infection, high fever, dyspnea, sputum, uh, and uh, he was brought to our ER and the situation was fine and he was intubated. And uh, you can see in a very early phase in ICU, all the aspergillus study uh, results were positive for aspergillus. And we gave the patient with voriconal treatment and we did a prone position for his ARDS, you can see here. And uh, however, the patient's condition didn't uh, improve very rapidly. So mm, you, we restart the dexamethasone maybe <laughs> then at that time and uh, maybe the cytokine stone I think didn't resolve. And uh, you can see here the x-ray, yes, not improve. And uh, we, we check the drug level is fluctuated. Yes, for the voriconal serum level, and the sputum culture still grew uh, aspergillus, so we shift uh, voriconato to isafconaro to try to have the more adequate, uh, uh, drug, more stable drug level. And the sputum culture uh, start to grow on identified mode. And uh, you can see the chest x-ray with his uh, left upper lobe here to have this uh, cavitary region left upper lobe. And uh, pneumothorax occurred one day and the CT scan showed a severe left side uh, uh, pneumothorax because the cavitary region ruptured. 
And uh, we send the prior diffusion for identification, the prior diffusion culture group mode, and we send to identify its common handler. And the drug susceptibility test shows highly resistant to azo and only sensitive to M4 terrorism B. So we shift uh, our uh, ESAF Conaro to liposomal M4 terrorism B. You can see, yes. It's very beautiful, right? But it's very less for this patient. The patient expired even under uh, liposomal infoterrency in fact, uh, treatment. This is the first case published in Taiwan with the patient, COVID, severe COVID-19 patient with uh, both uh, CARPA and CAM. So uh, the risk factor for COVID-19 associated mucomycosis CAM we all know about the steroid use, and uh, uh, some people have, especially I want to mention is iron overload. Iron overload is a risk factor for mucomyxosis infection, so we check every patient with severe COVID-19 infection with ferritin. We monitor the ferritin level to see if the patient have the iron overload. And the other risk factor is uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, mediated exocrine damage, and uh, if we have the typical or suspicious imaging or clinical features, we should do the bronchoscopy or a sputum culture to obtain or like our patient to get the prior or some uh, specimen to have the microscopy or PCR test. We have PCR test for mucomycosis now. And if the one or more tests positive, we should start any fungal uh, treatment for CAM. And uh, initially, it's important is to reduce the steroid, maybe discontinue the immunomodulator therapy, and we should start a higher dose for the liposomal amphotericity B. If liposomal amphotericity B is uh, unavailable, the second line the treatment is isafconado or posaconado for CAM. So the uh, flexible uh, bronchoscopy is very recommended. And, and we, we did uh, bronchoscopy for our patient, but uh, the result is aspergillus. But we did a prior fusion, the result is uh, mucomycosis. So, uh, so co-infection of aspergillus and uh, mucomycosis is possible for severe COVID-19 infection patients. And the liposomal amphotericin B or even early surgery is suggested for uh, severe uh, mucomycosis in patients with uh, severe COVID-19 infection. And uh, uh, posaconazole or isafconazole was recommended as maintenance therapy follow uh, initial response. In patients with stable or progressive disease, the experts recommend a savage therapy with posaconazole or isafconazole. Thank you.